In the ongoing drama of evolution, species come and go. They live, they compete, they die out. Extinction is the termination of a species. We can think of a species having a birth date, it lives for a while, it goes extinct and it dies out. 95 to 99 percent of all species that have ever been on the planet have gone extinct. On average, a species dies out after four million years of existence. It could take less time, it could take much more. But it's all part of the normal process of extinction. Always there, always happening. Conditions change. A new predator arises, perhaps the climate changes, perhaps a mountain range suddenly appears geologically. Through those processes, this particular species is no longer able to live, it dies out. The extinction of species that can't adapt or compete creates opportunities for new species, new forms of life, in an endless cycle. So evolution and extinction are in balance. But what happens when a planet-wide catastrophe kills off many species in a great mass extinction? The game of evolution has changed its rules a little bit when one of these massive extinction events takes place. Suddenly you've leveled the playing field. It was a level playing field that made our very existence possible after a mass extinction 65 million years ago. Now it's we who may be causing a new one, but this time we may not be as lucky as we face evolution's severest test. Five times in the past 500 million years, a mass extinction wiped out most of the species alive at the time. The Earth itself tells the stunning story with its geological and fossil record stretching back through time. Today, sheep roam the highlands of South Africa's Karoo Desert. But 250 million years ago, the Karoo played host to creatures we can barely imagine. It was their world, and then they were gone. Geologist Peter Ward is here to study the secrets of history's greatest mass extinction, which swept those creatures away. It's a challenge that anyone would find daunting. In late 1999, I spent three weeks camping in a tent next to an old abandoned farmhouse and behind this farmhouse I wandered the grounds and found this beautiful old graveyard. One of the tombstones had a husband and his wife. There were two sons off to the right. The dates on the tombstones range from 1892 I believe to about 1897. The mother was the first to go and the youngest son, who was only 42 years old at the time, was the last to go in 1897, all die out in this five-year time span. There's a tragedy that has happened here, yet we have so little record of it. Looking at the epitaph, Niem dan frey mei stof wa arde, translated into English, that is, take my ashes and set them free on earth. So a hundred years, these people are just wiped off the face of the earth. Absolutely. And we have no idea what killed them. Yes. And if that's the case, how am I going to figure out what killed animals that lived in those hills, the fossils of which we have from 250 million years ago? 250 million years ago marks the end of the geological time period called the Permian. 
It's the rocks of the Permian that give Peter Ward his first clues. These types of layered rocks often have fossils. In fact, here in the Karoo, we find within these green layered rocks lots of fossils of two types. We find skeletons, and we find the remains of activity of animals. Some animals burrow. They make little tunnels in the strata. As a matter of fact, there's probably one sitting right back here. This is either a bone or a burrow. Here's the piece of a burrowing organism of some sort. Some animal was living and digging through the strata. It gives us a sense that not only were there larger vertebrate creatures here, but a wide diversity of smaller animals. Sometimes they died or were killed or predators took them down. Their skeletons fall in this sediment and we find it as fossils. At the South African Museum in Cape Town, the fossils of dozens of species have been recovered from this lost Permian world. I was walking on a farm track and there in the middle of the farm track was this little piece of bone sticking out of the shale. Not, not a very exciting piece but I took my pick and started to work around it and revealed the back of the skull here and then down towards the snout. And when finding the tusk here, this beautiful uh, faceted tusk, I knew that I had a complete skull. Then I began the long task of uncovering the back uh, of the skull uncovering vertebrae after vertebrae, working down this way with the ribs beginning to develop here. After two and a half hours to three hours, I knew that there was a complete articulated Lystrosaurus. Lystrosaurs were the Permian's most common plant eaters. Gorgons, ferocious predators up to two feet long, ruled the plains. Then suddenly the Permian ended. The rock record reveals a cataclysmic change at the threshold of the next geological period. The Triassic. We geologists can climb through time. I'm going to climb about 50 feet up through here. I'll go through two to 5,000 years of time when I do it. This is the very last layer of the Permian. As soon as I climb above this, I'm now in the Triassic. We're sitting in the very bottom beds of the Triassic. In these beds, we have no fossils whatsoever. All the Permian creatures that we saw right down there have disappeared entirely. A few of them we know survived because one or two species will be found a little higher up. But in these beds, we found nothing. Not only are there no fossils, there aren't any of the burrows or the tunnels or the traces of animal activity. We see instead layers of rock that could only have formed in the absence of animal life. So catastrophic was that mass extinction that even the small creatures have died out. It's not just the mighty, it's the meek. This place is dead. What could destroy so much? What could turn day into a seemingly endless night? It may have been a comet, as some new evidence suggests, or a combination of factors. Sea levels dropped. There was a dramatic rise in global temperature. Volcanoes erupted, depositing a million cubic kilometers of lava. The atmosphere changed as the level of carbon dioxide increased. Ecosystems around the world were ravaged. Mass extinction followed. The most dramatic turn possible in the course of evolution. <laughs> 